Right, here I am, yet again. <coughs> this is one uh, I didn't intend to make. Um, just to show you what my cigar box guitars turned out like. The reason I didn't intend to make anything like this is because there's plenty of stuff on YouTube about how to build them. I mean, when it comes down to it, that's how I found out. Uh, so really, I have nothing much to add in terms of the uh, actual construction. Um, and there didn't seem to be any point in me cluttering up everybody else's uh, search result queues with how to build them. Um, but, uh, my mate Brian said... To be honest, I think you should put something on YouTube to show the people who are out there the different um, sounds and tones that your uh, cigar box guitars do make. And faced with such an emotional plea from the heart, uh, what else could I do really? Um, so what follows is a look at uh, each one that I made and I'll just sort of either tell you and let you listen to what they sound like um, and it isn't for, for the actual mechanics of building the thing uh, it's just what they turn out like uh, afterwards because they do sound quite considerably different and again it's just a matter of Bodger's notes that people see um, in, if they are thinking of building one along these lines uh, and I'm going to do it differently to the stuff I've done before instead of trying to do it all in the one take uh, what I'm going to do is um, do I found out actually for a new toy to play with on the saw me editing software I found out how to do little transition things from one scene to another um, and uh, I'm going to use those uh, to join uh, little segments together, one for each guitar, you see, and then you'll get a transition. Um, and if you, you know, if you're not interested in one particular guitar, you can just whiz it on till you see the transition and have a look at the next one. So there we go. Here comes the first transition. Come on. Right. This is the first uh, cigar box that I actually made. It was only supposed to be a practice piece, just to find out. Uh, if I could make one um, and lo and behold I came up with this uh, it is 9mm ply four sides in the back and 5mm uh, ply on the front or the top uh, it is uh, solid beach neck um, fretboard which I bought in as a with the slots cut and uh, pieces of fret wire ready cut and put them on myself um, the strings are set half an inch apart uh, they are as far as I can work out because I've got proper notes I've had to measure it and convert it from metric to thou to get the gauge oh dear me uh, but the long and the short of it is the bottom string is a 38 gauge um, steel wound string that one. the middle string is a 40 gauge nylon and the top string is a 32 gauge nylon uh, I am indebted to Shane Spiel for uh, divulging the uh, tuning of C6 Steve's Trans Wonder guitar, uh, which is how I've tuned this. Uh, G on the bottom, G an octave above that on the middle string, and the top string is a B above the high G. So, well, it sounds nice, I think. sort of Tex-Mexy kind of sound. <laughs> there you are, that's it. Uh, it is 13 inches by 8 inches, 2 inches deep. Decorated it up and because it's supposed to be a lash up it's got a couple of nail heads here and there and a netting staple and a roofing bolt. 88, um, they are actually uh, gatepost numbers. The S, I don't know where that came from, it's something to do with a car, I think. Um, that means love and kisses in trucker's slang, apparently. CB slang. My cheap guitar's logo. Um, it's got a pickup in it, and through the amplifier, it sounds nicer still.
crazy one if you could play it. There you are. Um, so, there you have it. I don't think I can tell you much more. Uh, but I'm going to keep you. I quite like the um, Tex Mexi sort of sound of this. Um, albeit I don't play it very often, but it's nice to have. Uh, and as you can see, I put the jack plug on the bottom there, which uh, I think I've found out since it's a mistake that um, because when you stand it upright on the carpet, you get all the dust blowing up inside, which is <laughs> not desirable. The uh, only thing else that I have to tell you is it is a lash up, as I said from the beginning, which is why I call it the Jeep Caster. <laughs> Bash it about a bit, but that's what it's supposed to be just uh, a rough little thrown together cigar box guitar there you have it right stand by for another transmission transmission yes i'm going to get run over by the back end of the car cheers now now this one is the second one that i made um technical specs it's 14 and a half inches in that direction eight and a half that way and two and one eighth top to bottom four sides in the back are nine millimeter ply the top is five millimeter ply the strings are I've had to write this down uh, 50 gauge wire wound on the bottom 30 gauge wire wound in the middle and a 15 gauge plain string on the top that's what it sounds like without amplification not terribly good I don't think uh, the strings are set 10 millimeters apart um, which compared to the uh, store-bought guitar where they're 7 millimeters apart it seemed like a really wide spacing at first but now I've got used to the half inch um, spacing um, which is I think about 13 millimeters for those who don't speak Imperial uh, I'm a beginner very much of a beginner and I'm very clumsy with my fingering and I've got big fat fingers anyway and I have a problem with uh, pressing down on one string but uh, doing that sort of thing my fingernail are catching on the next string too as well. Uh, not very clever. So I find the half inch spacing a lot better. This is going to be um, redone, re-spaced. The pickups it's got in are going to be replaced by a humbucker. All of which I will show you when I've done it. At the moment uh, it's got two pickups in it. A piezo, the usual sort of arrangement in front of the um, bridge about there. Uh, and another one, uh, the bridge is actually on a block of wood as you can see and uh, it's hollowed out underneath and there's a piezo actually in the bridge uh, if I can remember which way around the switches are that's what it sounds like without amplification let's give you a quick that's what it's like with the bottle now with amplification this is on the bridge pickup something there but it's not very good to be honest with you I don't think I'll be repeating that um, I think if I use pizos again then I'll be under the bridge there however under there not too bad I think supposed to be aren't they? But there it is, uh, that is uh, this one. Uh, like I say, I'm going to do some, uh, make some major changes to it and you'll see more of that um, when those changes are done. So that's that for the moment. Right, uh, a license plate guitar. This is the next one I made after the black one which I've just shown you. I didn't intend to make any more because um, 
I have got, believe it or not, a choice of three resonator guitars uh, in a six string format. Um, so I didn't really think I needed anything like this. But then I saw Justin Johnson playing one and I thought, oh, go on then, I'll have a go. Um, made one and um, my mate Russ down the pub liked it so much he insisted that I sell it to him. Uh, so I had to make another. So this is the second one I made. Um, not much difference between the two. The first one, um, I'll just tell you the, the size of this thing. Uh, it's made in 9mm ply uh, all the way around, including the top. So all 9mm. Uh, 14 inches long that way, 8 that way, and 2.5 front to back. Uh, but the top, which as I say, is um, the thicker stuff, 9mm. Uh, there's a cutout which runs uh, more or less along the edge of the uh, license plate. So all that area there is just license plate, um, which allows the, uh, the the sound from the strings to get that tinny tone, if you like, uh, that comes with the resonator. So there we are. Um, told you the sizes, haven't I? 14 by 8 by two and a half. The strings are 45, whoops, 45 wound string, uh, 25 uh, wound string and a 15 plane. As you've just seen, I have got some problems with this jumping the tracks on the bridge. And there's also a buzzing uh, on the top string. There you, are, you see, it's buzzing somewhere, I'm not sure where, there I think. Um, so it needs a little bit of work. I don't play it terribly often again, you know, it's, uh, but it's a nice thing to have. I'm afraid I haven't got my guitar playing head on tonight. It, uh, I'm done. So that's what it sounds like. Um, Acoustically, it's got one piezo uh, microphone under the plate, about there. Sounds quite nice, really. Huh? Apart from the buzzing, of course. sort of uh, nice tinny sort of sound not the sort of thing I would want to play every single time that uh, I picked a guitar up it's a sort of thing to play when you're in the mood for it uh, and the other little thing look put some fret markers down the edge there those are um, abalone shell which I don't know I just think it's nice there we are. right license plate guitar. Next! Now, the next one I made was this one. I'll start off by explaining that my personal taste is I prefer silver uh, to gold. I'll prove it by wearing my best bit of bling. Uh, and I prefer chrome and polished alloy to um, brass. But I prefer white metals to yellow metals in other words. But having said that, I do quite like to see a nice bit of polished brass now and again. It's got a nice sort of oldie worldy look to it. And uh, I was quite pleased with the corners uh, on the black one that I've shown you. Know, those were chrome, obviously. Uh, but I didn't. I was aware of the fact that they were available in uh, a brass type uh, colour. Uh, so I sent off a some. I thought I'll have a go at making a brass one with uh, brass fittings. So I did. And. Uh, Sent off for a sheet of brass, only a little sheet, only A4 size, but 2mm brass. And I made these bits and bobs. And off we go. Uh, the sound holes, I bought those from America. They are uh, little grommets. Um, there is a hole there, and they've got a mesh over the top of them. I thought when I bought them, they were going to be a bit bigger than that. Um, but that's my mistake. I misread the information on eBay. 
Now, uh, the dimensions, it's 11 and a half that way, 6 and a half that way, and uh, it's in 9mm pi for the four sides in the back, and that's 2 inches of 9mm ply, and the top is 4mm ply, so that dimension there, 2 inches plus 4mm. Uh, the strings, they are, uh, coincidentally, uh, I've got some well they call it bronze but they're brass finish um, wire wound strings all three of them and I thought what I would do was to um, emulate if you like if that's the right word the bottom three strings on a six string guitar the bass strings if you like because I you know, I spend quite a bit of time messing about doing um, 12 bar riffs and Chuck Berry riffs that sort of thing I'm not going to play one to, to demonstrate because there's a surprise with the sound of this and I don't want to blow me surprise. Um, but the strings are uh, uh, 50 gauge, 40 gauge, 30 gauge. They're tuned G, D, G and the trouble with that is that it does make them very tight. Uh, fingering is, is difficult. And I set them at the sort of height for bottlenecking like I usually do. Um, but they don't take the bottle at all well. So, the surprise is, it sounds like this, look. Now does that or does that not sound like a banjo? I think it does. Um, it doesn't take a bottle very well. Through the amplifier. Oh, by the way, one piezo usually. pleased with the, uh, the final appearance of the thing. It looks like a, <coughs> a miniature uh, piece of that sort of rugged luggage that they used to make in sort of Jeeves and Worcester days or Titanic days, you know. Uh, uh, we're standing the rigours of travelling abroad, uh, that sort of, sort of thing. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, got my cheap guitars logo on and you don't get anything cheaper than gold spray paint now, do you? Um, I think if I was going to be just building one cigar box guitar, uh, I don't think I would go for one like this. Alright, for somebody like me who's, you know, going to make several and plenty of time mess about as a hobby, you know, and there's lots of guitars lying around the house, yeah, that's all very well. Um, but not. If you're only going to make one, I wouldn't go for one like this. But if you want to make banjo type noises, this is the one for you. So there we are. I'm sorry, there's probably just been a bit of a jump, hasn't there? Uh, the reason being that I, um, I did say, here comes a transition. And I realised afterwards uh, that I'd forgotten one quite important point from a guitar builder's point of view, the fret markers down here. Uh, all they are is um, brass countersink screws, uh, countersunk in, and they're slot head screws, they work quite nicely I think. Um, if there is such a thing as a countersink screw, brass screw, that works with an allen key, now that would be even better still. But I, I don't know whether you could get such a thing, but little, uh, little slot heads work. Small point, I know, but um, it adds to the finish of the guitar, I think. So now, here comes a transition. Right, having built the brass one, uh, which was strung to uh, copy the bottom three strings on a six string guitar, 
seemed a reasonable uh, idea to make another one that would copy the top three strings. So I did. Now, don't let these boys good looks of mine fool you. I am in fact nearly 64 years old. And uh, I was born in 1950. And in the 50s, uh, it was before they invented colour. Uh, and they invented colour towards the end of the 1950s and released it to the public in the early 60s with the result that anything modern uh, shall I go like that? anything modern uh, in the 60s had to be in this nice uh, new thing called colour and everything was bright red and white and we're talking about sports cars radios, record players, fridges hair curlers, hair dryers, power tools, you name it, everything modern was red and white. And I thought it might be nice to make a retro cigar box guitar. So, <laughs> so that's what this is. Uh, and it is strung uh, with the top three, uh, to match the top three of a, a six string guitar. The, um, don't take me too literally on this because uh, with fine strings it's rather difficult um, to measure them with a micrometer uh, and uh, without taking the strings off altogether. When you start performing trying to go hook them round without twanging another one. It's a bit difficult. Uh, but the long and the short of it is, as best I can measure and convert from uh, my metric um, micrometer to thousandths of an inch and gauges uh, the bottom one is a 22 gauge, the middle one is a 17 gauge and the top one is an 11 gauge and it's tuned EBE. The dimensions of the thing are uh, 13 and a quarter that way. I mean it, I am a little bit superstitious and I don't like deliberately making things 13 so I put the extra quarter on so it wasn't 13. Uh, 8 inches that way. Uh, and now I decided to try and see what happened if they made it if I made the box deeper. Now it's the same routine as with the brass one, it's 9mm ply, four sides and the back, and the top is 4mm ply, and that distance in the 9mm uh, ply is three and a quarter inches, so you've a further 4mm on top of that. What does it sound like? Um, it's, it's quite a nice little bit more volume I think um, I thought it might be a bit deeper or richer because it was deeper um, in the body but not really to my way of thinking that sounds uh, sort of like a mandolin uh, which has been strung without the double strings you know like a mandolin has terribly good for the 12 bar is. Oh, I don't know that. Um, and uh, it might be good if you were going to do a sort of um, uh, quite deliberately hillbilly cigar box, get your music out of anything you possibly can, um, kind of an a, a evening or performance, whatever. Uh, might be fun for an app point of view. Uh, quite nice with the bottle. Um, oh, and I'm going to tell you this before I forget. Uh, fret markers, these are mother of pearl. Uh, and they're a bit bigger than I intended to buy. Again, it's another cock up. Um, uh, misreading the data on eBay but uh, I think these are actually I think 8mm or something like that and I normally order 6mm six, uh, six ones but anyway they, they're there and it matches up with this um, with the white uh, these are just ordinary screws painted uh, by the way but it matches up with that sort of thing besides anyway there you are told you about that so Amplified, and again, same old routine, piece under there.
nice if you fancy having a little sort of mandolin type tinkle. <laughs> there we are, I'm quite pleased with it. Um, uh, the fittings, by the way, that's a sheet of uh, perspex, white perspex, 2mm perspex. The tailpiece is aluminium, painted white, and the, uh, the bridge, that's just wood, but again, painted white. But, you might be surprised to hear, I call this the red one. Next, well, the next one I made, um, I saw on YouTube uh, a chap who had converted one of those five gallon uh, petrol cans, or gas cans as they're known in America, uh, what do you know the sort of thing, big, great big five gallon containers, uh, metal uh, and a big elaborate um, top on it, uh, the sort of thing that uh, intrepid explorers um, tie on the outside of their four-wheel drives, you know, to just to show the world that they're really serious in explorers. Anyway, uh, this guy on YouTube, uh, he'd made a, he'd converted one of those to a guitar. Um, and uh, he actually played a John Fay tune on it, and I rather like John Fay, so that sort of set me off. And I got to thinking, well, not one of those great big five-gallon ones, but just a one-gallon one, you see. So I made this. Uh, <laughs> It is, uh, actually it's fake, to be honest with you. Uh, it's plywood all the way around. Um, the front though, as you can see, is a uh, two mil aluminium sheet. And the reason, I was already on my way to making one like this, just in plain aluminium, to see what would happen if the entire top was the resonator. You see, it's just sort of taking the uh, license plate bit stage further or the tin plate uh, guitars, uh, tin plate advertising sign guitars a stage further. So I'd already uh, sort of cut this out and then I saw the um, uh, the petrol can one. Uh, so I just sort of uh, faked it up a bit. This, uh, this is um, uh, grey hammer finish paint. Uh, the handle there, um, that's off a, uh, a saucepan, that's steamer on the steam resonator. Uh, it's one of, if you haven't seen it, it's not a saucepan handle like that, it's one of those you get to either side. It's, uh, that's what that is. Uh, the, the petrol cap though, that is real. Uh, my mate Steve Talbot uh, got me that from a car boot sale, thank you very much Steve. Uh, a little stub of wood painted up and the whole thing just looks like, well, I think it's convincing anyway. Uh, now, the strings are 55 wire wound, 35 wire wound and a 25 plane. They are tuned EBE. Um, but I'll come back to those in a minute. The dimensions 14 inches that way, 8 inches that way, 3 and a quarter inches that way um, and the four sides in the back are 9 millimeter ply. Top as I've already said 2 millimeter aluminium. The sound of it, um, quite nice. Have I turned the amp on? No, I haven't. I'll just bear with me while I do that. Uh, acoustically, it's got quite a nice tone to it, this. Not too loud, though. Uh, and it sounds like... Uh, one that was made from a petrol can, believe it or not. Right, so that's acoustically. Same thing, one uh, piezo under there. with enough reverb on it, it gets, uh, it gets quite good. Let's put some reverb on for it. <laughs> now, uh, the 
there is a problem with this. Uh, the, the bridge actually is a piece of that stuff they put on the floor uh, for French windows to slide um, or patio windows as you might call them to slide on. Um, <laughs> twin gutters if you like uh, and I've cut one of them off which leaves that bit standing up and cut the slots in for the strings. Now normally you're always at the mercy of Dame Fortune that you can get the string in the middle perfectly right so that it's in tune on the 12th fret like that. Then uh, you can get one of the outer two correct like that. Then you have to put yourself in the lap of the gods. Actually, I must look it up and see if there is a patron saint of Luthiers. Mm. Anyway, never mind. Uh, then it's in the lap of the gods that the third string will be right. And this just isn't. See, that's... Now, I think this is a case where either I've got to change the string somehow, because it's not a problem I've encountered before this. Uh, I think it might be to do with the fact that this is a fairly heavy 25 gauge um, plain string. I think it might, it might be a different ball game if it was wound. The other alternative of course is uh, three separate uh, bridge pieces, you know, like you get on a, a store-bought guitar. But uh, here in England it's, it's a bit difficult to find the individual ones, although I have seen them on cigar boxes on YouTube. Um, I don't know. I think I might do better with different strings and I'm slowly but surely coming around to the idea that uh, for what I want uh, a fairly standard um, set of strings would be, and don't hold me to this, uh, 45, 30, 20 I think in wound strings. I think that's what I want. but. You know, uh, let's see, the jury's still out. But suffice to say though, going back to the uh, the gas cam guitar, this is it, that's what it looks like. <laughs> oh dear. one cut off rather abruptly um, but I had in mind that I got to the end of it I'd shown you all the the ones that were finished uh, and I then started with my sort of closing remarks as it were and uh, dawned on me afterwards looking at the rushes as we say in film circles good day eh? um, that I'd missed off my pride and joy this one now this isn't a true cigar box because it's not a box. This is a solid timber body like a, an electric guitar. But what is it? Well, this body is kitchen worktop, block timber, solid proper timber, not the uh, melamine covered covering on a chipboard. And it's a piece that uh, my mate has got kitchen. His kitchen is kitted out with this. And he brought me a lump round and said, look, this is an offcut. Uh, can you make me a chopping board out of it? And I said, of course I can. 
put it under the work under the workbench. Forgot about it altogether for literally three, four years, maybe more. And I found it the other day when I was ferreting about down there looking for something else. And of course it had gone mouldy. And well, I don't think um, it's a good idea to use timber that's got mould on it like that for food preparation. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just fussy about things like that. Uh, so I bootlegged it for this. That's nice, lovely stuff. Like I say, solid timber, nice grains in it. Um, the neck, while well, we're on about grains, uh, is a piece of ash. Uh, I bought a, a plank about, I don't know, three and a half, four feet long, about a foot wide, an inch and a half thick, uh, and I was chopping it into, cutting it into blanks for necks. And one slice, particularly, revealed these grains here. And I liked it so much, I thought, I'm having that one for myself, you see. So I did! And uh, the colours in it, I hope you can see. Uh, I'll just sort of lean it back, so... Uh, and forward again. At some point you ought to be able to see those. Um, but they are... Uh, they're the same sort of colours, I've seen those in a melted ice cream. Something like a chocolate ripple or something like that, chocolate ripple and vanilla, you know. Uh, they're lovely colours. Uh, they come out quite nice on the back as well, if you can see them there. Um, now, what else to tell you? Uh, well, I think um, dome head brass screws for the fret markers. Uh, you notice he's got a humbucker pickup. Uh, there's only this one and the test bed guitar uh, had humbuckers in, or well, they're the only ones I've used humbuckers in up to now. And I must say I'm very, very, very impressed with them. I do like them a lot. Uh, piezos are a lot easier to use. Um, uh, these require rebating in, you know. Uh, but they do. They produce a nicer tone, I think. Depends what you want. Uh, volume control on this one, uh, just, a put, uh, just a pot put on there in the, with the wiring, not terribly difficult. Brass bits I make myself. Now, I want to point the bridge out to you. It's The black bit is just a piece of timber with a piece of fret wire set in it and slots in. But I had a bit of trouble with it, the, the uh, strings jumping the tracks. So, uh, more or less out of frustration, uh, I made this, cut this little tiny bit of brass like that. A couple of screws to go between the strings. And that, those go down, that holds them in, those presses down on them. The bridge itself is actually just in front, but that does, they haven't got enough room to jump up and off the tracks. But they do have enough room to just move that tiny weeny bit as you're tuning them. So that, uh, that is an idea which I'm going to keep going with, because jumping the tracks is quite a bit of a, a nuisance, shall we say. So, that's that, now I've got my notes here about what I've got to tell you. The strings, these are what I think are going to turn out to be my ideal um, pattern, if you like, or set of gauges. 45 uh, wire wound, well they're all wire wound, 45 gauge bottom string, 30 gauge middle, 20 top. I think that's the standard formula from now on. The dimensions of the body, 14 by 9 by... It's actually 40 mil that, which is the standard size of a worktop. It's about an inch and a an inch and a half ish. So, what else to tell you? Sounds lovely. I mean that that is uh, fairly bassy. So I mean you can alter it obviously on the amplifier, but. Uh, Sort of thing. 
listen to this. conjures up the sort of backing music of a very moody black and white nighttime cobbled street or cobbled alleyway our hero James Bond dinner suit uh, dinner, yeah dinner suit Mickey Ball steps out into the light of a single street light white cobble street walks off down the road Nice to be able to make these sort of noises, you know. I suppose. Anyway, I've had enough goes at getting this thing right, so I'm going to leave that in, warts or not. Uh, there you are. Don't know what I call it really. The electric one, I suppose. Not the worktop one. But uh, as I say, well worth making one of these. I really like it. So uh, I think that's the more or less the end of this little lot. Uh, there are some more in the pipeline and I think they're going to be a, a sort of sequel. Um, there they are for what they're worth. I hope that the whole point of this lot is just to let uh, bodgers like me see what I, the results I got and hear what results I got. Um, I hope that that has been some help to you all out there. Uh, what more can I say? Make an entrance, Jim. All right. Cheers now. Make an entrance. Make an exit. Cheers. <laughs>